Maguire has issued a statement, has he? He's issued him a statement. Maguire has issued a statement and he has oh, said that, this will be a laugh. He said that mistakes are part of the game. I apologize. A great fight back and spirit to get us back into the game uh, by the lads. Uh, take the positives and look forward to, and I look forward to Qatar. Tough time <laughs> will make us stronger. And, and I read it. And at first, my first thoughts were, and I was I'm tweeting it out now, asking people if that's good enough from the England captain. Yeah, sorry, the Man United captain and England centre back. And at first I thought, fair play, you know, he's apologized and he's taken ownership. That element I'm fine with because I want him to take ownership. But there's a, there's a part of that that worries the living daylights out of me. Take the positives and I look forward to Qatar. Yeah, the arrogance no. of thinking he's there, but he well, knows he's there. And that's the worry. Why does he have to improve when he knows he's going to be there? This is the thing. Mm. I can understand to a degree Harry Kane kind of knows he's going to go. He's a captain and he's scoring goals at, at record rates for England, right? He kind of knows he's going. And I know there's quite a few players that know they're going to be there. Sterling knows he's going barring injury. Saka knows he's going barring injury. Declan Rice, they all know they're going. But they're also mm. in their current teams. Most of them doing well in their current teams, playing regularly. This guy is barely going to kick a meaningful ball for eight weeks now. He has got huge pressure upon his shoulders. He's crumbling and cracking in nearly every game that he plays in. Every match he started this season has ended in a... all Have all been defeats barring the draw against Germany, and he was culpable for two goals. The, <laughs> fact, that, the fact that he knows he's going, that's my concern with him and a massive concern with Southgate. If he doesn't improve between now and between now and the World Cup, he shouldn't go. And at the very least, he should not be guaranteed to start when the best centre back currently on form. Uh, people keep saying it's Tomori. I actually think it's John Stones. Right. I think John. I think John. I think John Stones is marginally. Stones and Tomori should be the back yeah, pair. Tomori, the back they, they, they should they should be in the back two. And if we're using a back three, they should be part of that without a shadow of a doubt. The fact that we're not promoting that media that 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 meritocracy, and there is this blind loyalty from. Uh, uh, Gareth Southgate to Maguire people have got to understand that's why there's going to be a lot of hate that's why there's going to be a lot of anger that's why there's going to be a lot of frustration towards Maguire now that doesn't excuse people that become nasty and abusive but it's there because people want to see the Tamoris and others given an opportunity because we, we all recognize he's looking but brilliant. not only that Terry it's there as well because he talks too much like he posts his own stats out on his Instagram page like you've seen it, everyone in the chat's probably seen it. he posts his own stats. Yeah, his agency will post the stats, he will repost it on his Insta story. Like he 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 done an interview for Manchester United. You'll remember this a few weeks or months back, where we said, Well, yeah, I'm Manchester United captain for a reason. The other players have gone, I'm still here. Like yeah. the arrogance of the guy. Like, and, and this is why people won't gravitate to him now. Now add in, you can be that arrogant if you're having great performances and people just go, cool, love him, look at him, he's super cocky, he's super arrogant, but now he's back in on the pitch. When you're passing them in on goal and giving a pen, then when you're running like a headless chicken up the pitch and then just jogging back, ball watching, not even knowing where your man is. Yeah. Yeah. And then you come out with statements like that. Bro, he, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, he, he, he shouldn't be in the team anyway, right? It's not his fault he's being picked. But just keep your mouth shut. Uh, mate, I, say anything. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I've had a lot of top reds come for me talking about how and showing me like quotes from interviews regarding England or, or, or Man United where he has taken ownership. And I'm like, this is the problem with those statements. He has said like that. Like that if you read that, that apology today in isolation, it's like, oh, he's taken ownership. The problem is he'll receive some more criticism next week and then he, he'll post out on Instagram something that bigs him up like there are no problems where there'll be like a, there'll be a stat that'll come out and say, well, if you look over the last uh, 180 days, um, Maguire has the, the third best uh, defensive jewel rate in world football and he'll post it out and he's posting that to say, and he'll post it. And we all know what he's meaning by it is. I know you guys are saying I'm rubbish right now, but look, this stat proves I'm not. And that is why I don't think you're isolating in one game, not a whole year. But it, <laughs> but it, but yeah. But my view is like, I don't believe, I believe what he said, because I've read it. I know he's put it out there, but I don't believe the sentiment and the and the honesty and the word authenticity behind the message of I'm sorry, or I know why I've been dropped from the Man United team. I just don't believe it. And Mate, he's so arrogant, Terry, that he, when was approached by Oli to be Man United captain, said yes. 
like I watched, I watched a clip that somebody showed me earlier um, of Robbie interviewing David Dean. David Dean, when he went to Arsenal, was offered to be the chairman of Arsenal by Sir Peter Hillwood. And David Dean said, no, I know the history of this football club, mate. I'll, I'll stay as vice. They yeah, were just on the board, I think, whatever it was at the time. I think, I think it was just board. Harry Maguire goes, yep, I'll be England captain. Uh, sorry, Man United captain. After being the world record fee for a centre-back. And unfortunately, you have got you have got a lot of fallout more to come as well. Because this guy is not going to get many games this season under Ten Hag. But he's £80 million. Pound. He's got a massive ego to the point where he does post his own stats out. He talks too much in the media. Yeah. yeah, but then when you want him to talk after an embarrassing defeat, he hides. Yeah, and then and then like you said, it's like if 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 he'd been offered the captaincy of Man United, which he was by Ollie, if anyone worth their salt, mate, would have said, Do you know what, this is Man United. I've only just got here. Well, there's yeah. that. Give it, there's... To, give it to De Gea. Give it to Rashford. Give it to whoever Pogba, whoever yeah, at the time. There's, there's that. I don't mind him taking it. Because I want my players to believe in themselves, but you've got to deliver. You've yeah. got to. You, when you take those risks, you have to deliver. And he hasn't He hasn't done that. And I don't dislike Maguire, really. Like I, Again, I draw the line at certain things. I'm not abusing him. I'm not calling him names. He's not as bad. I said this the other week. He's not as bad as people make him out to be. But as a Manchester United and England footballer, He's nowhere near the level. If he played for Bournemouth, yeah, well, like, this, nobody would moan about his mistakes because well, it's yeah, you're right. What's going to yeah. happen? What's going to happen? He'll leave Man United. He'll go to a. I tell you where he'd be brilliant at a club like West Ham. He'd do amazing there. He'd do well and in why a club. Is it? Yeah, he would. He'd do well in a team that play a back three, as an example. He might even go to someone like Newcastle, who are trying to get to the highest level, but they're not. Right, his passing is no good for Newcastle, mate. They want to start passing out from the back and elevating. Oh, no, I think but I actually West think Ham again, probably I, not far off from that. West Ham or a Villa or someone like that. I don't actually think he's passing from out the back. He's like though I know he gave it away last night, but he's yeah, given but it. Away. How many times has he done yeah, that? How many but, times? Yeah, have yeah, you yeah. Seen but but I'll, I'll explain that though, mate. That's the thing. It's he he has become. This is what I was saying on on the BBC earlier. He is so mentally damaged. That's why two things are wrong here. One, continuing to play him right now because he ain't ready in the head, and two, everybody out here protecting him. And what I'm noticing is, what's really funny is this as well. Every comment I've seen from players in the last week defending him, none of them have been specific in saying the abuse he's receiving is disgusting. What they've said is the criticism or the stick or the idi little idiots online that are, that, are, that are saying he shouldn't start. No one's been, no one has been specific about the abuse he has received. So, for instance, when the three lads missed their penalties at the World Cup, Saka, mm. Rashford, Sancho, the abuse they got that was criticized was the racism. And that was rightfully criticized. Nobody said it was wrong to go, you bloody idiot for missing a penalty. Because that's kind of a normal reaction. Calling, you know, having a go at Rashford for stuttering his run-up and missing a penalty. I didn't care about that. It was the abuse he got while defending him. No one's mm -hmm. come out and said, listen, the, the when, even better example, away from something because of motivated racism. When Granite Xhaka was being abused to a point where they were wishing cancer upon his wife, wishing for his legs to break, that was condemned. When Fellaini signed a new deal at Man United, people were wishing cancer upon him. I hope your legs get broken training. I hope you get a bad injury. I'm not seeing that in droves from towards Maguire. And what I'm not seeing is players come out and say it is hideous what people are saying about him. What I'm really seeing is it's wrong to keep criticizing him. No, it isn't. The reason he keeps getting criticism, he keeps getting played and keeps right. making mistakes and he needs to be taken out of these teams. And That's no, the, the thing that I find infuriating. Terry, Terry it's not wrong to criticise him. Yeah, if, you, if you're the world's most expensive centre-back right, and you're Manchester United captain, one of the biggest clubs on the planet, and you are literally a fish out of water every game you play, there is literally compilation videos left, right and centre of his cock-ups yeah, and yes, every player makes a mistake and it's more highlighted at centre-back than and goalkeeper than it probably is anywhere on the pitch. Mm. But just stop being a clown. Like, last night, that second goal, like, what is he doing? He was he was literally yeah. in number 10 position no, I, and then he loses the ball and he's jogging, looking over there. It's like, <laughs> well, you don't even know where Kai Havertz is. Why are you looking at the ball? Just run back. He was just sprint back. 
Well, yeah, that's yeah. his point, isn't it? It looked like a jog. But I, I agree. I agree. But he's with done you. it before that. Have you seen that viral clip that's going around of the, the woman that's gone, yeah, my boyfriend hates Maguire. Have you seen it? Yeah. <laughs> and great. he's standing there and he's going, listen, babe, this is Harry Maguire. And he's and, here. And, and, and this is what's crazy about it. So, someone just said here, uh, this uh, this is a bit much criticism. Most of his England career, he's been very good. And by the way, when he got booed. What's he won for England, by the way? Nothing. I, look, I don't even think we need to go into that, though, Lee. Like, if you go back six months ago when he got booed for England, I would, mm. my, my response back then was, well, that's crazy because he's formed for England has been good. I don't think he deserves to be booed. However, mm. he has not got better since he's got worse. And that viral clip of that, that bloke calling out him, rushing out from the back, that mm. is a mistake he makes for Man United two, three times a game where he tries to step out like he's Virgil van Dijk, but he doesn't have the speed to make yeah. it. And he leaves a hole in behind. And, and then every... he also, the pass for the for the penalty he gave away, he does that two or three times every game. Sorry. He does. But the reason why it's in his head, and this is the crazy thing. There's two things at play here. One, the reason why people wanted him dropped months ago is they felt that eventually his United form would come into England. It has. He's played in every game of the last six where we've conceded so many goals and not won any of the games. And I think he's been a part of the problem there, along, along with tactics and other elements. He's not the only issue. But as you've said, those mistakes he makes, he's making all the time. Now, he wasn't making those mistakes in his first 18 months, two years or so at Man 